Dawn of the Dawn is one of my favorite ongoing series right now. It has such an incredible balance of romance, comedy, and action. Manga that try to dip their toes in too much can often not do any of them right, or at the very least one of their many aspects falls short in favor of another, but Dawn of the Dawn manages to keep each of its stories engaging. And even though the story itself has me invested, I don't think I love Dawn of the Dawn as much as I do if it weren't for Yuki no Butatsu's incredible artwork. And Seiko, but mostly the artwork. Now, if you know absolutely nothing about Dawn of the Dawn, you should probably watch my video on it and the manga that also came before it. But since you're already here, I'll give you the Sparks Notes version. Momo Aise, who has just been dumped, finds a boy being bullied. She steps in to stop it, as what she hates most in this world are scumbags. The boy she protects finds the courage to talk to her about his obsession with the occult, aka aliens and urban myths, which he assumes Momo is also into. Momo corrects him and tells him that she does not believe in aliens, but instead believes for a fact that ghosts are what's real. This starts a heated debate between the two. They decide to hold a little contest to settle things. Momo will go to a hotspot for aliens, and a cult con will go to a hotspot for ghosts. Whoever encounters something at their respected locations has to admit defeat. Turns out they're both right, or both wrong, causing Momo to be abducted by aliens and a cult boy to be cursed by a spirit, uh -oh. thus beginning their adventure together to investigate the supernatural and save the world from alien threats. Again, this is a super quick Sparks Note version of the story, but while I was explaining that, you might have already started to get an idea why I love Yukino Butatsu's art so much. First off, the characters have so much character. We already know the take no shit type of attitude Momo has from two pages in because two pages in she's performing high kicks on scumbags like this. And what an incredible pose it is because Yukinobu uses it twice in the same chapter. It actually kind of becomes her thing. Yukinobu's character acting for comedy is also top notch, especially in the character Jin and Joji. He's one of Momo's childhood friends and he's popular as well as a class clown, and his faces and poses reflect that. Like what the heck is he even doing here? I love this exaggerated take Yukinobu takes with his characters. Sure, he could have Jin just regularly point at the carton, but this pose is so much more fun for both us, the reader, and I imagine for Yukinobu to draw himself. What impresses me the most about Donadon, though, is the full page and double page illustrations and the frequency at which they are drawn. Illustrations like these are usually rare or safe for climactic, dramatic, or poignant moments. Drawings like this, of course, require a lot of skill, but a lot of time. When a manga goes on a week break, you can usually expect a big drawing from the artist when it returns. Yuki Nobu Tatsu must not be human because we get drawings like this what feels like once a chapter, sometimes multiple times in a single chapter. All three of these images are from the same chapter, two double page spreads and a full page illustration. And these drawings follow chapters with the same level of art and detail in them. It's not like he was phoning it in in previous chapters and decided to go big with this one. He went big in those previous chapters and decided to go bigger. While I read Dawn of Dawn, almost every chapter, I take a moment to just admire the work that must have gone into these illustrations. I can't help but pause my reading, audibly whisper, damn, under my breath, and look at the art in sheer adoration. This leads me into how Yukinobu handles action in Dawn of Dawn. I got a comment from Jumongus on my Before Dawn of Dawn video that reads, Atsu's work shines so bright not just because of the writing, but the fact that the action isn't muddied by massive sound effects. All the emotion and major beats get to speak for themselves, and boy, do they. And I couldn't agree more. Fight scenes are clear and easy to follow, as well as not being covered up by unnecessary sound effect bubbles. In other manga, a blow like this would have a THOOM word bubble to emphasize the force of the hit. And sometimes that helps, but sometimes I can just take away from the drawing and be more reductive than supportive. Like this scene, for example. Stop talking already. You've done three things should never have. First, you hurt Momo-chan. Second, you defiled Gigi. Gigi would never hurt Momo-chan. Never! Give him back! Give me back my dear friend! <laughs> the kid gloves are off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen! And the third thing you shouldn't have done is piss me off. Like we don't need to read the force through words. We can see the force through the art. And the monsters, oh my god, the alien and supernatural creatures that fill up so much of this manga are just 
incredible. Now I'm not super familiar with the paranormal and those adjacent to it, but I believe most of these are Tatsu's own takes on existing myths and aliens. So how he isn't running out of fun, creepy, and creative ideas to this day is truly amazing. And with this he's also mastered a great page turn. Either with suspense or shock, when you turn a page and are greeted by one of these creatures, it's always a treat. If I were to really think about it, there are probably many manga that I think are better than Dandadan, but I have not had this much fun reading a manga than when I'm reading Dandadan. Dandadan is just so incredibly fun to read in every aspect. But even if I wasn't having fun reading Dandadan, I think I would generally look at each chapter just for the art.